Sharma ji will achieve it. It drones. Uh, Sharma ji told Dr. Sharma, you send me the papers. I read everything. I know <laughs> what sort of drones are there. And uh, I'm thankful for giving me such intensive knowledge. Thank you very much. Sir, I remember the time when you excited our imaginations in 2014-15 and when we conducted our first convocation of Amity University Haryana. I remember drone delivered the first gold medal to be awarded actually at the convocation. And that was the beginning of our excitement that yes, it can be done, it can be delivered without any any trouble and with precision and with uh, all necessary. And Mr. Padmakari ji, welcome, welcome to this. Padmakari, I wanted to greet you. If you are there, we are happy. No, good evening, <laughs> sir. It is a great privilege to be with you on this platform and a great initiative uh, that I think we can take it forward and take this aspect also into the curriculum delivery also as well. And Mr. Ms. Prasad, Dr. Sanjay Singh, Karl Kapoor, you people are the ones who are going to take forward these initiatives under the blessings of founder president. So let us listen to him and how we can build a sustainable partnership with uh, Mr. Well. And uh, Dr. Prasad, Prasad is also playing a role in formulating policies for the country, for the drone policy. Yes. So you can reflect on some of those uh, during the deliberations maybe after the presentation. I think you can go live. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. My Honorable Chancellor would also be joining. He spoke a minute ago and I'm sure Honorable Chairperson is also desirous that this program should also be seen by the children of the MIT school, international schools. So hopefully some of them will join, although today happened to be a holiday. We could uh, we would pick up another date for a bigger program for drone once again when great many people can join. But still, I'm sure, the, uh, I'm hoping that this program will be very well attended by both the people who are working in the area of drone design and development and also by the younger community, which need to be sensitized and excited about the newer science and technologies which will drive the growth and development of tomorrow's economies around the world. Uh, from drone, we learn a lot otherwise to understand how to design systems which can operate without any uh, human interference and, and in an autonomous way. And this is a, this is an area uh, which provides tremendous amount of learning, of course. Namaskar. First of all, hearty welcome to our beloved founder president, Dr. Ashok K. Chauhan, sir, for this webinar on drone and civil applications, which is being organized as the inaugural event under the umbrella of Mission Drone. Honorable founder president is a source of eternal inspiration for all of us at Amity Universe. With his blessings and vision, all the campuses of Amity Universities have grown leaps and bounds and have been identified as the most sought by the students for their higher education. Founder President has imbibed the relentless working culture among all of us. Sir, hearty welcome to you, and we seek your blessings for the success of the events plan. Yes. Yes. Our Honorable Chancellor of AUH, Dr. Asim Chauhan, will be joining us. And uh, Dr. He has Asim joined. Chauhan. He has already he just joined. joined. Oh, sorry. Already there, yeah. Yeah, welcome, sir. I, I would not do this uh, program without my being here. It is a wonderful thing you have organized. Please carry on. Thank you. Very, very warm welcome to Honorable Chancellor, sir. Your inspiration and your guidance provide tremendous amount of euphoria and create eternal connect and eternal interest, in fact, in pushing technology beyond the conceivable and imaginable limits uh, for our Welcome, Dr. Singh Delighted to have you. Namaskar. Welcome. 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 Uh, Honorable Chancellor Achim Chauhan has carved uh, IUH as Innovation and Research University. His observations on minute details and his vision for leading the institutions to march ahead of time is a wonder for all of us. Sir, hearty welcome to you once again for this event. Great. And Dr. Sridhar, I congratulate you. Founder President is so busy, he can only <laughs> go to one out of 10 webinars. But the fact that he has come for your drone webinar, you must have really created a very good program. Uh, so you. we are so happy that Founder President is online today. Thank you, sir. Blessing, sir. Welcome to Professor W. Selvamurthy, President ASTIF, whose age never grows. His thoughts and mission are always on run towards betterment and innovation. Dr. Selvamurthy, sir, has rekindled the spark for another phase of mission drone at Amity 
sir hearty welcome to you once again thank you thank you hearty welcome to professor pb sharma honorable vice chancellor auh for this event our vice chancellor is a constant source of inspiration for all activities at auh sir welcome once again for this event professor padma kali banerji pro vice chancellor and dean of academics auh is also present for today's event madam's innovation in curriculum design and pedagogy has placed auh at high level madam welcome to you for this event we also have here dg afs ia dr rajiv sharma sir director ai sst aup dr ms prasad director ai ae aup dr sanjay singh director academics aup colonel rk kapoor welcome to all the eminent libraries present here it gives me immense pleasure to welcome my former pg student and today's speaker mr ramjan patan and i will introduce him to the attendees at a later time we also welcome vcs pro vice chancellors and authorities of all campuses of amity university including those from dubai campus principals of amity international universities faculty and students of amity university and other invited attendees from other universities across the nation now i invite our honorable vice chancellor professor pb sharma to give opening remark for this event sir ladies and gentlemen i join dr asan sridhara in extending a very warm welcome to each one of you especially to our Uh, motivator and our visionary leader, uh, Honorable Founder President Dr. Shok Chauhan, who is sparing his highly valuable time to be with us in this very important webinar. Mission drawn is close to the heart of our Honorable Founder President. Uh, very warm welcome to you, sir. Very warm welcome to our Honorable Chancellor Dr. C. M. Chauhan and all the senior members of the Amity Group present here, including Professor Dr. Silva Murthy. Dr. Padma Kali Banerjee, Dr. Kapoor, Professor Prasad, and many of our heads and deans who are joining this very important webinar, along with the young, inspired minds who want to really take the technology and science of drone much forward. For people like me, drone is perhaps the perfect example of what we often call integrative science, which means all sciences together can be put together in designing and development of drones. So it's a perfect example of integrative science and also a perfect example of multidisciplinary engineering. And that is where all engineering comes in, whether it is mechanical, aeronautical, whether it is material science and technology, whether it is communication technology, whether it is artificial intelligence, whether it is machine learning and the newer systems of GPS enabled and GIS enabled autonomous systems automation, everything comes in. And therefore, drone is perfect example of integrative science and multidisciplinary engineering. Having said this, let me say that drone is not just merely a means of monitoring or doing surveillance or doing some deliveries, uh, but in fact, it is a great technological advancement, which powers advancement of technology in very many other sectors. We all know that autonomous systems are becoming more and more important today. We all want to have a car which will be a driverless car and will, without precision, take us from one location to another. We are, tomorrow you will have, in fact, already flyby by our aeroplanes are there. Tomorrow, autonomous systems will do this. You will require autonomous system for surveillance of our borders and coastal areas, but also for a whole lot of civil applications where we will deliver the drugs and medicines and also monitor from with, with precision. Uh, uh, happenings uh, uh, as well as developments in various project activities around. So I think the applications are growing and this is one of the area in which MIT has taken a lead long ago. I remember 2015 when at the convocation, first convocation of MIT University of Haryana, the first gold medal was in fact delivered to the Honorable Chancellor's hand by using a drone inside the Pandal. The time of course, technology was not as advanced as it today, but it happened with perfection, and we were also delighted. Then, after of course, a lot of development had taken place. Our own students and, and faculty members are greatly excited and engaged in design and development of drones, and we would work together along with our mission drone teams in various institutions of Amity, uh, as well as universities within India, as well as abroad, and will. It will work first, ensuring that the dream of our founder president, Dr. Sokke Chauhan, that Amity should play a highly meaningful role in empowering India uh, in the area of science and technology of tomorrow's drones. And that is one dream and vision which Honorable Founder President has. And I'm indeed very delighted that Mr. Ramjas Jan Pathan, the founder of uh, 
lightning drones and also managing director of uh, uh, aero rotor at all innovations innovative solutions is here with us to share his highly valuable uh, experience of designing developing and deployment of uh, drones of variety of drones for civil applications from your webinar today we would like to understand how to go forward and and really put together designs which will mesmerize the imagination of people and will certainly deliver a much bigger promise for the drones, both in the civil as well as in defense application. With these opening remarks, ladies and gentlemen, let me finish by saying that Amity University uh, system as a whole is uh, driven by the vision of the Honorable Founder President, where each Amity University has to be a research and innovation driven university. And that is where I think the differentiator comes, where every member of Amity, whether he's a student or a faculty, is to be deeply committed and excited about the integration of research and innovation mm -hmm. in education. And that is precisely what is happening in our humanity university and that makes us a class apart. With these opening remarks, may I take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome to all of our esteemed members of the MIT education group connected to this very important webinar and, and extend a warm welcome from MIT University Haryana for each one of you. May I go back to now Dr. Sridhar to steer the uh, the webinar further. Uh, I think we should request our Honorable Founder President, sir, to say a few words, or Honorable Founder, Honorable Chancellor, sir, to say a few words before we go to the speaker, uh, introducing the speaker in a formal manner. Honorable Chancellor AUS, sir, uh, over to you for your opening uh, remarks uh, before I request the Honorable Founder President to take it forward. Prashama, I, 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 I do not think this is a technical webinar, highly interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing every word. I do not think I would like to share any remarks as of now, except for the fact that we at Amity are, of course, dedicated to interdisciplinary and translational research. So all of the research happening in our labs, we want to go and have uh, utilized in applications that can change mankind, humanity, and society. And therefore, the discussion around drones is very important because there is no limit to the kinds of applications that drones can be utilized for, from uh, medical services to surveillance and st uh, strategic issues, defense, um, you know, uh, logistics, supply chain. So endless, uh, you know, number of applications. And we have to think about the work that we're doing within our labs and universities in partnership with Mr. Ramjan and others who are the topmost thinkers in this area. How can we collaborate and work together to really have an impact and take this forward? I think there is an aspect of regulation also and uh, the permits and permissions that have to be framed properly in the country to allow for drones to truly uh, reach their full potential. But I'm very excited and I uh, congratulate Dr. Sridhar, uh, who is our director asset, as well as all of our other senior people at AUX that you are pushing the boundaries or new ideas and new thoughts. And Professor Baby Sharma, you rightfully mentioned that at our first convocation, when drones were not yet a buzzword, a drone had brought the first gold medal to yes. be given off the university. And from that day itself, we had set the standard that our university will be technology, innovation, and research driven and oriented. And uh, we look forward to this deliberation. Founder President, uh, would you, sir, like to say something before we begin? Sir. Yes. We would welcome the blessings of Founder President, sir, right in the, uh, at the start of the webinar, sir. Founder President, sir, over to you. And Founder, if you can please unmute, if, if we can unmute Founder President, please. Yes. Yes. Since he has spoken, I need not to speak. The son's worthiness shows the worthiness of the father. It's <laughs> wonderful, but I must tell you, I'm so excited to listen to our Dr. Patha Mr. Pathanji. I'm so excited. After that, I'll speak. After <laughs> I've heard the whole lecture, then I'll speak a lot. <laughs> okay. uh, Shridhar, please, uh, please continue. Sir, uh, before I start with uh, Professor, I mean, Mr. Ramjan Pathan, I request Dr. Salvo Murthy, sir, President ASCF, to present a note on mission drone. So that we'll get an introduction of that and then we'll start with Ranjan Patan. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sridhar. The founder president, you know, he makes many missions. And this is one of the mission which he started uh, two years ago when he actually visited uh, Amit University Haryana 
he not only saw this drone giving this gold medal, but he saw the demonstration of many of the small, small varieties of the unmanned aerial vehicle display and also demonstrated to him. Then he said, uh, we should start a mission in Amity Group on the mission drone. So this was a message given to him, a mission promulgated by him at that point of time. Then immediately we gave the responsibility to Amity University Haryana since Professor B.V. Sharma himself has started the mission in Delhi Technological University earlier. When I saw, I had the opportunity of seeing that. So we started this mission and now uh, it is time for us to fully activate, gear up and bring many, many innovation. But whenever he starts a mission, he has a long-term vision that this mission should lead to development, not only of the technologies, products, but also the capacity building. We will need a large number of people who will operate drones. So you need pilots, drone pilots. You need drone uh, traffic regulators, because who will be regulating the traffic over a period of time when it picks up? So founder president, when he announces a mission, he has many, many things in mind. That is how one is R&D development of drones. And uh, I had the opportunity of talking to Mr. Ramjan Pradhan, Pradhan just about an hour ago. So we were understanding what all capabilities. I was amazed to see the kind of uh, the applications he has already made for land survey mapping, hazard assessment, solar farms, and windmill mapping. So he has already applied. And it's a big company. He has now 11 people working with this company. And he is looking for partnership with Amity in a big way. And this Lightning Drones India, as well as the Aerotur Innovative Solutions, both have a very big route. And uh, he himself has been mentored by uh, Dr. Sridhar. Today, the world market is 22.5 billion US dollars is the drones market today. And in another five years, it is going to grow to 42.8 billion US dollars, which is 13.8 CAGR. And the Asian market is the, the most important market in the global market is the Asian market. So that is why we have a lot of opportunity and I'm sure that we will all move towards as has been mentioned by the chancellor, uh, Dr. Asim Chohan immediately he sanctioned three lakhs to build the basic infrastructure. As soon as founder announced the mission, he gave that input, go ahead. And he has already, and due to this, uh, uh, corona problems that we couldn't start that. Otherwise, the program was organized at the AUH for the capacity building and to build the club. So now it is time for us. We will start this program and we are looking forward to a very long lasting partnership with this great uh, person, Mr. Ramdan, the young dynamic leader, which I admire. And uh, so once again, compliments to uh, Professor P.B. Sharma, as well as Dr. Sridhar for having taken this initiative to take forward uh, this mission announced by founder president, we are expecting that this, this mission will churn out many new technologies which will find application in agriculture, medical, law and order, police ports, mob control, land survey, solar farms, windmill, mapping, and also search and rescue operations in forest or uh, avalanche. So there are many, many applications. And also in surveillance and reconnaissance in military, which is being used. In DRDO, we have developed First Lakshaya, then Nishan, then Rustum. We have a family of the drones that have been developed for military application. Now they are looking at combat drone, where you can just put missiles into that and then launch it over there. Or instead of aircraft launched, so we can have air to air Astra missile linked with that. So we are looking at many applications. Now, in fact, US has developed a big drone which can drop a tank, that kind of payload. So I'm sure that Amity will contribute both for military as well as civilian defense application. Compliments to you, Dr. Sridhar, and uh, we depend on you as a mission director to many, many results to come out of this. Over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for this opening yes. remark. Yes. I will give a brief yes. introduction of the speaker. Mr. Ramchand Patan is the founder of Lightning Drones India and MD, Aerotor Innovative Solutions Private Limited. He obtained his graduation in aeronautical engineering in 2009 and master's in rotating machinery design, that is turbo machinery in 2011 from Coventry University, UK with MS Ramaya School of Advanced Studies, Bangalore as nodal center. He had bright academic background throughout and secured 27th rank in the gate in 2011 at all India level. 
He is also pursuing PhD in bird aerodynamics and he has designed and developed an RC flapper also. He later worked as assistant professor at MSR SAS for four years and taught many courses related to conceptual design of aircraft and computational fluid. He has also set up a dedicated lab for aerial vehicles at MSR SAS, which is considered as unique in the country. He has supervised 23 master theses from aircraft design and automotive engineering and completed four research projects under national program for micro air vehicles. And the National Design and Research Forum, NDRF, has honored him with the title technical advisor. Ramjan Padan has been offered for the post of chief executive officer, Andhra Pradesh Drone Corporation, a subsidiary company of AF, APSFL Andhra Pradesh. His company has provided service for various civil applications of drones and provided solutions to cinematography, forest surveillance, electrical transmission line inspection, solar PV modules, thermography, and wind turbine blade monitoring. Mr. Ramjan Patan was my student. I am proud to say that he was my student at MSR SAS while he was studying for his master degree. And I remember him as a student with focus on practical approach and is highly innovative. With this introduction, I am sure he is the right choice as a resource person to deliver the first webinar as the opening activity under the umbrella of Mission Drone. Over to uh, Mr. Ramjan Patan. Thank you, thank you very much for all dignitaries. Basically, uh, it's my great pleasure that Dr. Sridhar, who was my HOD when I was studying my MTech, he is introducing me here in this big platform. I am uh, really appreciate all the words from dignitaries, basically from uh, founder president here who is joining this uh, particular my webinar. Uh, even uh, we have a chancellor, vice chancellors here, head of uh, several departments, R&D department, uh, W. Salamurthy sir. Uh, as uh, P. B. Sharma sir started uh, saying that this particular uh, drone industry or drone development is integratory science, or like you can say interdisciplinary uh, uh, science actually it is. The same way uh, you can see in this particular industry, you required the background of almost all the sciences or all the engineering which we are generally learning. So when uh, we are talking to the students now, um, I hope uh, several students are already joined here. So I uh, warm welcome everybody and uh, start uh, with my this uh, presentation for you all. Uh, this particular presentation is, uh, made uh, in keep in mind all the students and their uh, further career as uh, uh, R&D had uh, told already that uh, we are definitely looking forward for such a great relationship with uh, Amity University and Lightning Drones as a further partnership for developing drones and then using them at several uh, places at several applications. We are uh, looking forward for such a great uh, partnership. Uh, shall I start with the presentation now? I, I will share my uh, screen with a presentation. <clears throat> I, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, visible. Go ahead, Dharam Chan. Super. Thank you. Uh, so I, I start with uh, the same uh, poster which uh, Dr. Sridhar has made for this particular uh, webinar, that is uh, Mission Drone of Amity Universe. I really uh, thankful uh, to uh, Dr. Sridhar that he has introduced me for uh, such a great event actually, and then uh, they are kicking off drone mission at Amity University. Uh, <clears throat> Going further, uh, for uh, this particular uh, day, the presentation which I have, the overview of that particular presentation is to introduce uh, uh, unmanned air vehicle or drones, different applications and types of uh, UAVs, uh, the journey which we had done uh, in under lightning drones since 2015 to uh, 2020 now, uh, development of UAVs and uh, uh, how to design it and then how to make it and all, and future trends in the same uh, UAVs. And hopefully every, all the students are interested in uh, the career opportunities in this particular industry as this is growing uh, to uh, so fastly exponentially. As sir just told that this industry is as it now itself, it is uh, 22 uh, plus uh, billion dollars USD and which is in next five years, it is uh, becoming double. So definitely all the students should uh, uh, look for, uh, for this presentation. Uh, regarding uh, introduction to UAVs, 
as everybody knows now uavs that is unmanned aerial aerial vehicle or unmanned aerial systems which generally people call as drone are the flying robots this robots can be operated manually or today the main focus is on autonomous drones that is they can fly autonomously they can fly alone or they can fly in the group of uavs or maybe they can fly with manned flying vehicles or maybe manned unmanned surface vehicles that is ugvs or even on the ships ground vehicles or underwater vehicles so uavs can be flown alone or they can fly in a group of uavs or group of uavs or you can say uh, autonomous systems so that is what is uav today standing they are flying with uh, several other uh, systems drones can be of any size they can uh, can be of size of on the top of palm or like as small as like in mm or maybe they can be size of jumbo jets according to their applications and missions they are be, uh, being made or being built or being customized for several applications today in industry so these machines are being used in almost every sector starting with the surveillance on the international borders or even in the spraying in the farm it is being used in uh, visual inspections of wind turbine blades or even they are being used in emergency medicines to be placed or to be sent in remote places of africa they are being used in cinematography very heavily and they are being used in monitoring of illegal poaching or illegal uh, wood cutting or anything in forest so lightning drone is being a part of this entire journey here they are we had introduced several drone applications like electrical tower inspections in movies documentaries advertisement factories industrial inspections <clears throat> now you can see this all here we had actually put it in uh, some uh, photographs these all photographs are from lightning drone we are not used any google image here so you can see the applications which generally we are going with like electrical inspections like big towers we can inspect with the drone as the first objective that is to make the staff life secure that is that is the first objective which we uh, it was there in our mind so we are actually standing very much away from the electric line which are live lines actually and then just sending our drone which is a flying object close to the uh, tower that is also the uh, away from the magnetic interference of the tower and then it is zooming in the particular component and then taking the images that is what we do in uh, electrical uh, inspections that is a close inspections then we have drone thermography where we have very high end thermography camera that is ir sensor so with that high end ir sensor we do thermography for electrical lines even for solar panels wind turbines and several other uh, applications which i show further wind turbine inspections as i explained you before like wind turbines are so huge going above and then doing the inspection is not at all possible generally so that is why drones are being used there 360 we are videography this is very new area which is coming up in the market where we are putting 360 big gimbal on the drone and then flying over the uh, object and then doing the videography and uav mapping where we can do the survey or mapping or of very big area like 100 200000 uh, more than 1000 acres of land that is where we are uh, working with other than this applications i will just go ahead and show you the, these are the places where we had worked already these are our uh, proud partners or proud uh, clients which uh, where we are work uh, i i hope many of you are uh, knowing uh, the uh, uh, most of the clients over here they are big names uh, to uh, uh, to uh, bring the interest among the students basically uh, we had worked a lot in uh, uh, bollywood and hollywood industry which you can see here few of the names i'll show you from uh, more uh, details further Uh, as of now we had worked in so many places across uh, india uh, we never got a chance actually to go abroad but uh, definitely we are looking forward for and we are talking to few of the clients uh, but these are the places where we had uh, uh, worked across uh, uh, the country and now i hope this this will create a quick interest in all the students who are there uh, sitting uh, i hope uh, it won't be bored for you this entire session uh, th these are the places where we had used our drone uh there are the, uh, several movies and several advertisement i i hope many of you are uh, naming them now i'll go ahead uh, this is one of the place where uh, uh, mo most of the work we are doing and uh, where actually drones are doing fantastic work according to client and according to the uh, entire drone industry 
you can see our pilots are flying and they are doing the inspection of big tower and then small power lines which are charged actually those lines are work already charged or already uh, taking the current over there previously in a classical way what they used to do is like they ask to climb somebody like generally all the skilled uh, labor they used to climb the tower and then they used to see whether there is problem or not problem and all and then they has to come down and report to the engineer over there but because of this particular uh, drone technology you can stand away from the line and then you can fly drone and you can capture the uh, what are the data you required at every point and then uh, give, give to the results i will show few of the results which will uh, create interest again now now you can see the very close inspections of transmission line this is a uh, 400 kv line actually uh, which is very huge uh, where generally uh, tower size will be somewhere uh, 50 to 60 meter and few places it will be more than that so you, you can see the uh, close uh, photograph which we have taken the first photograph i hope you can see uh, where you can see even there is r pin missing or like one sp small pin we generally call as quarter pin or r pin that pin is missing over there that you can find out from there the similarly the right side photo in the frame that shows you how that arcing horn is actually uh, uh, being loose at the junction and because of that it is actually uh, having a contact with the live conductor and it is bu started burning the conductor over there so this kind of observations you may not get when people are climbing over and then doing this all job and that was very much labor job and most of the line in india it is not being or not has monitor properly so we are the uh, company who is initiated this and then doing very extensively across india actually now you can see something else that is uh, on the left side you can see some of again uh, more problems in small line and right side or uh, below the frame you can see thermography results that is uh, how you can spot the temperature with your thermal camera you can see some spot 1 spot 2 spot 3 the different temperatures in the screen uh, similarly uh, uh, on the right side above there is a line uh, we had actually put on the gis we are uh, using some software as google map and all and uh, creating the, we are digitizing the uh, old lines which are like somewhere 20 30 years ago they had installed and they also don't know where this line are going so this is what a job generally we are doing with uh, electric lines going further this was a 155 meter high tower inside the creek uh, this was a torrent work in uh, somewhere in gujarat you can see some people were working there but they wanted the company wanted to see whether they are really doing the correct job or they want to do the monitoring that monitoring may not be possible with the people again climb and do it so with drone it was very much easy and then uh, one of our pilot was flying through the boat actually means like they were standing on the top of boat and then they were flying this this was a really amazing work which our pilots had done going further as i uh, explained to you before that uh, drone thermography with a solar uh, plants so we are using drones to inspect the plants as if now today we have somewhere uh, 35 gigawatt of uh, installation in india uh, out of that uh, somewhere 3.5 gigawatt of work or uh, inspections had done by lightning drone already you can see few of the images how this plants look like through uh, solar uh, sorry through ir camera uh, you can see at the center image uh, there is a hot spot at one uh, which can definitely tell you that there is a problem which kind of problem our sms will find out such kind of things uh, our teams are doing on the daily basis similarly we can find out the few more problems like uh, broken panels and uh, even uh, connectors uh, failures or you can say the loose connector burnt connectors so with the drone itself we don't require to go down these are the uh, few of the samples which we have done for validation work and uh, that, that is as shown here similarly wind turbine inspections so we can do uh, wind turbine inspections with the same drone we can fly drones uh, close to the uh, turbine blade and uh, uh, zoom it on the particular point and then uh, take the uh, images you can see here uh, what i am talking about the zooming uh, in the first that is 1x where my drone is just standing and then uh, looking at the turbine blade 
whereas you can go further and see how close we can inspect from the same location that is what is a uh, beauty in the using this kind of sensors on the drone <clears throat> you can see the results with this uh, particular uh, sensor you can see the sensor at the center and uh, different kind of problems in the wind turbine uh, the, these are the problems which we had uh, noted with uh, thermography uh, you can see on the left side there is one kink in the turbine blade which is not seen with uh, naked eye or you can see the visual inspection but can be seen with the thermography this is a uh, quite uh, good work actually has done by lightning drones and uh, has been appreciated by the clients uh, you can see uh, some more uh, inspections with uh, gimbal has uh, mounted on the top of the drone and we can fly below the asset and then uh, do the inspections like bridge inspections where we have done both uh, thermal and visual uh, inspections mounted like this similarly uh, we can use this uh, kind of technology to inspect each and every bolt and nut in the structures or lattice you can say there are say, uh, different kind of lattices are used in uh, communication tower even in wind turbine towers there are, there are several examples uh, like the same way we are have done already chimney inspections for few of the factories which i can't show it here uh, now you can see the uh, clients for uh, this particular industry inspection work ntpc is one of the main client where uh, we are inspecting almost all the asset over there uh, similarly uh, we had very innovative uh, work got it from uh, toyota auto uh, they wanted to inspect their roofs of all the uh, plant uh, before monsoon and after monsoon which they used to do with a uh, uh, person climbing on the ladder and then going on the top of the uh, roof which is uh, very very critical and a uh, few of the places there there was an injury to the person so th this was very good work and appreciated by the industry uh, this is uh, something close to the civil application where we are uh, creating map out of uh, the images taken by the drone this is uh, uh, th this uh, uh, images are uh, image processed stitched and create this uh, particular 2d and 3d geo referencing maps Uh, you can see the several applications for the same again uh, this is the team how they work on the ground and they the uh, several uh, different kind of uh, equipments they use on the ground uh, these are from the sites uh, of the images uh, uh, to just showcase uh, one more case study uh, where we have done work for uh, is uh, i that is uh, uh, for uh, warangal fort where you can see uh, ua mapping for uh, settlement marking road marking contours uh identification of monuments for water bodies electrical poles trees fort features this is very new approach to land survey and where we can do at very fast rate now you can see the similar the same image which has taken by uh, google satellite uh, this thing that can be convert like this with a drone mapping now you can if i'll just focus or zoom inside the image which is uh, the final output uh, with uh, cat drawing this is autocad drawing actually if i'll zoom it at the small portion you can see how it is look like uh you can see each an individual house with their compound wall their roads uh, all the electrical uh, lines or telephone lines and then on the top of that there are contours and levels which are actually implemented this entire data has been created and submitted with drone imagery so this was one of the successful project which was uh, directly done uh, for uh, isi archaeological survey of india <coughs> yes sir uh, so uh, similarly we can do uh, corridor mapping uh, in the corridor mapping on the right side you can see the corridor has been uh, taken with the uh, kml has been given by the client and uh, at particular location we can uh, take the cross section and take the several points like 11 points has been taken here and those points can be reflect here with the uh, data sheet with excel sheet uh, you can find x y z that is the elevation uh and then uh, profile for the elevation so this is also uh, has done for uh, several clients now and uh, we are regularly using drones for the this particular application where we can uh, fly drone uh, collect the data stitch them in the back end and create this contours and then further uh, post processing for uh, according to the application from the client these are the several projects which we have done uh, for ua mapping uh, some of the glimpses out of that is uh, shown here on the left side uh, bottom you can see uh, uh, we can actually find the canopy height also 
uh, but uh, it, it should be uh, means like such requirement supposed to be posed and then only we can do uh, we require to do some more work in this but this is done purely with uh, drone uh, imagery on the right side you can see we had uh, used drone imagery uh, photometry to replicate the old uh, impulse and uh, find out the dimensions and created the 3d objects out of that uh, this is a very new approach uh, as uh, previously i had showed you ir camera and then uh, mapping both now here there is a multi spectral camera where uh, we can see uh, multi spectral camera can, can, can be give a, like it can find take it has actually five uh, cameras which has different different bandwidth and this bandwidth can be replicate and used to find out the calorific uh, value and then your dsm ndre uh, ndvi rgb cir this kind of maps we can actually convert out uh, from the post processing results this we are putting again on the drone and then uh, creating uh, such kind of maps just like we are taking uh, multi spectral data and then stitching it together which can be used for uh, finding the yield or maybe the some kind of further disease in the farming this is in a very uh, novice or uh, initial stage so definitely we can uh, further work with the, this area uh Uh, as we had spoken before also uh, lightning drones uh, has been working with uh, forest department They, this was a noted work from uh, yavatmal that is in maharashtra where manita tigress was there and uh, uh, we we required to find her uh, across like 160 square kilo, kilometer of area so there my team was working uh, day night like uh, in day time my visual team was working Uh, and they were uh, using different exposure to find out uh, within the uh, forest area and uh, in night they were using ir uh, <coughs> cameras to fly the drone and uh, finding the different animals until rabbit uh, means like the small animal as small as rabbit we had uh, find out with this uh, images uh, which was 2 km away from the place where we were standing so the, uh, this was a work in uh, work done in our uh, civil we had done other work with uh, maharashtra department for uh, illegal uh, poaching and then wood cutting and smuggling and all those things so they are these are the regular work which we are doing with the uh, forest department uh, th these were the applications and the different type of drone which we are uh, uh, we are using or being used in industry today uh, now i want to take this particular discussion for the students and the few of the uh, employees and uh, teachers who are actually interested in development of uavs i i always feel that the final product which are uh, coming or like we are looking forward to is always start with your requirement and capability of team if these two are coming together then you have to find out the material which is available in market and then all this together will give you the uh, final product like i'll show you few of the examples which are uh, done in the lightning drone uh, how we are done <coughs> the this was uh, one of the project which we had done in 2017 uh, what happened the problem statement was uh, in 2014 there was uh, 400 migratory flamingo birds died in kutch gujarat uh, what happened because of uh, pgcl has erected very new line which was 400 kv uh, near the kutch area and that line uh, they had three uh, parallel lines over going there and uh, those towers were so huge like 76 meter of tower was there so these migratory birds were coming from europe and they couldn't actually uh, find out the earth wire which is like just 12 mm in uh, diameter and that was like 8 meter away from the nearest conductor uh, like i hope many of the electrical guys uh, know how uh, the structure of the tower so generally it will be like you have uh, conductors Uh, if you have multi circuit, uh, circuit uh, tower then you have uh, several conductors and then on the top of the tower there will be earth line so that earth line was very very small and was uh, no there was no uh, visual signature and this poor uh, flamingo birds was flying so far, far and then uh, they wanted to come to kutch kutch so they were going and hitting this particular wire and then uh, they were falling on the live wire and this was very big uh, issue actually because 400 uh, flamingos were died on that year so there was simple solutions we uh, solution which pgcl came up with 
what they had bought is like they had one small bird flight deflector one small circle i will show you in the next slide that deflector they wanted to just put it on the top of uh, earth line so definitely this uh, birds will see that and they will uh, deflect or divert their flight and go above and then uh, go further so this was very unique and very good idea and uh, but the main situation was uh, line was already erected and line was charged and they don't wanted to they didn't want to stop it so what we did in lightning drone is like uh, we had uh, developed one uav which can uh, carry this uh, marker and fly over and go go close to that particular earth wire and then place it or like you can say install it on the live earth line so this we have done in 2017 and we had created such uh, two identical systems it was look like this the left side you can see there is a bird flight deflector which was something like that and then uh, we had uh, uh, developed one drone uh, from the existing material available in market and uh, we had done a lot of uh, uh, trials and then uh, testing for this almost 6 month we were doing this and then finally we had created the turbo 2 uh, we had given the name turbo because there was one movie of snail has uh, one big antenna on the top so looking like that this uh, particular uh, uh, drone uh, we were using to install the uh, deflectors you can see at the bottom there was a dummy line and we had uh, uh, done this work for the one of the client in uh, maharashtra uh, something unique i know that uh, almost everybody has uh, seen some other drones like uh, multi copter and then uh, fixed wing and all but i wanted to show something different here today that is a flapping wing uh, uavs uh you can see on the top there are the cad models developed uh, with uh, several uh, design uh, this thing analysis and final cad model has been replicated in uh, actual prototype of gearbox and then final model of uh, flapping wing i will show you the small video i hope uh, everybody can see this so you can see here uh, that uh, this flapping wing uh, has been uh, attached to the thread uh, and then uh, we had just used a small throttle of 30% and this flapper started flying on its own i know that uh, it is actually hanging because of that uh, because of the centrifugal force also it is going away but yeah we have demonstrated this uh, flapper there is no propeller had been used uh, we could uh, reach to the getting thrust and uh, lift but we couldn't control this flapper so it was hanging actually uh these are the few notable uh, projects which were done at the lightning drones again on the left side first one that is ajay devgan films 30 kg payload uh, system which we had uh, made it and tested uh, vigorously for uh, flying uh, 10 kg of camera we wanted to put it on the top of that so this this was the first system second one we had work for terry that is the energy research institute uh that is for temperature allowed it was work uh, for global warming heat island was the one of the topic which we are working with where they wanted to see how temperature is changing above the uh, above several land uh, pockets like one of the example we had shown here you can see on the top of the building uh, the temperature is actually reducing from 26.4 to somewhere 25 uh, the there, there are some more uh, readings actually which are not there in the photograph uh, so the, this was one of the project where uh, we had uh, done this thing at several locations in the city and then at the countryside to uh, uh visualize how temperature is uh, uh temperature is there uh, on the top of the uh, concrete jungle and then uh, vegetation the third one which we had already discussed that is the turbo 2 for pgcr the fourth one we had uh, developed for again uh, cinematography that was 6 kg payload we are using sony x uh, the second last one that was uh, 360 vr camera as i was explaining before uh, that uh, we can put uh, gimbal with uh, Uh, more than uh, five to six cameras uh, that we can put it on the top of uh, drone and then uh, fly over, which can create actually 360 videos. Uh, this work we have done extensively for Incredible India. I hope you can see those videos on the YouTube also. Uh, the last one that is the 10 kg payload uh, system. You can see the uh, comparison with the Phantom, which uh, generally more people had been seen already. Uh, these are the several uh, R&D projects which we have done uh, already. uh the left side where you can see uh, it was one of the project from a previous employer uh, where i was involved extensively where we had uh, done uh we have uh, actually designed 
uh, analyze in the computer first and then uh, created the parts of the small helicopter which was one of the project under mp micro that is national program for micro air vehicle we are tested extensively extensively and then uh, submitted that with the uh, camera and the payload uh, gimbal uh, uh, this thing <clears throat> so uh, after that you can see some of the projects with the cfd we have done uh, some uh, projects with computational fluid dynamics and uh, experimentation also you can see some uh, uh, wind tunnels there uh, we have an uh, uh, piston engine uh, uh, installed there and then we are working with uh, different temperature and different uh, velocities with uh, different fin designs actually uh, so, so likewise we have some more projects on the right hand side you can see some projects with the fixed wing where we had achieved more than uh, two uh, hours of endurance and uh, uh you can see few of the drones which are so big that uh, we are sleeping uh, below and then uh, doing the work for this development uh coming back to the steps which are involved generally in development of the uav we will talk more about the air vehicle here again uh so generally what we require to do is like we require to first study the market uh, what is happening uh, across uh, the globe uh, it is not required actually somebody is doing next to your door Uh, you can find several people are already doing in some country so you definitely required to know what they are doing and how they are doing so that study is required for your own range again there is a range like as everybody knows that there are nano uh, drones there are micro drones there are mini drones large drones and then uh, very large drones are there available in market so you required to know actually which range you are working with and then that particular range you required to find out the uh, find out the uh, similar uh, drones first and their specifications with these specifications you can create a constraint diagram these constraint diagrams are very much required whenever you are con uh, conceptually designing something because you require to constrain your all the parameters in some envelope then only you can actually freeze the data faster otherwise what will happen is like one you will get some some data another one month you will get some more data you will just keep on roaming here and there so you require to constrain that and i hope uh, that, that will be uh, being taught in uh, design classes how to constrain and uh, constrain diagrams uh, then uh, generally in fixed wing it will start with the uh, wing designs then you require to select the propulsion systems fuselage design your empennage design like a tail design then you require to actually do overall performance of uh, entire system uh, before you had done already sub system uh, analysis then you require to actually assemble them do the entire uh system design like entire aircraft design uh, aircraft analysis and then uh, you required to actually take that cad model for uh, cfd structural analysis you required to go back several times like it is not necessary that you are going 1 2 3 4 10 you have to keep on going 1 to 2 and then again you have to come back to 1 or maybe you are going for the three again you have to come back to 1 there are several things actually so designing is not like one way going so you required to keep on doing it and then that iteration will actually boost your experience and boost your further confidence to do the next work so that that is uh, required all the time then you required to do stability analysis then you have to go for product most of the students do some mistake over here actually they jump directly to 12 that is prototyping they see something on the youtube or somewhere on the google and then they start prototyping on their own purchasing something on the amazon here and there but i urge i will that i just you just go to first what you want at the end then only your prototyping expenses and the time involvement will reduce so then you have to do testing that is ground testing you require to do you have to do the flight testing and then you require to produce the identical systems this is how actually generally uav designing go in the line i i hope we are, yeah here we have again separately fixed wing uh you can see a few of the graphs and then a few of the models we had been done in uh, cfd and then uh, actual uh, prototyping prototyping also you may have to do with uh, the available material in the market maybe something is not available in your market you have to purchase from somewhere else and that is not available and that particular day you require to go ahead and then see other parameters to uh, uh, test it and then go back to your actual material which you wanted so Uh, that way you required to again understand the limitations and assumptions which is point number 5 here uh, you have to understand the assumptions which are made when you are doing the analysis and then 
compromisation which you are doing when you are purchasing or you are getting the material so this is very much required otherwise many of the big projects fail here because what happened people go with the prototyping and then they started flying and then uh, as as you know once aircraft go in a uh, air it has to come down because of the gravity so if it is not coming and landing properly definitely it will crash so the work which you have done until date everything will go off again you have to start from the scratch so be very very uh, a uh, slow and then patience you are supposed to have patience to start the actual testing <clears throat> here again uh, one of the project i wanted to show about uh, uh, rotary wing rotary wing also again the same you required to do the conceptual design various parameter to consider while design uh, which will be useful further frame design first you required to do the uh, frame design according to your payload and then according to the market electronics available so you required to develop or fabricate and then uh, add or uh, as well the various components electric components on the uh, uh, you required to go ahead with your uh, again the limitations of aerodynamics and structures and assemble them ground test it ground testing is very much required uh, you required to do your uh, cg testing you required to do some kind of uh, static uh, analysis for this and then you have to go with the uh, flying of the drone as uh, Uh, in the starting note, uh, Professor Selu Murthy has been uh, told us before that uh, in today this entire market in the world it is twenty two uh, billion dollar, which is more than twenty two billion dollar, which will be uh, increasing uh, to forty three billion dollar in the uh, coming five years. So definitely, I can see the very good uh, future for all you guys who are listening to this particular. session which is uh, now uh, about to stop but before that i want to actually show you where you can place your uh, yourself in the industry uh, <clears throat> if somebody is looking forward for future design design trends in industry according to me these are the main areas where you can actually think of the first area where you can see on the left side that that nano hummingbird is just 160 mm in the length and 19 mm 19 gram in the weight it is very very small actually it is smaller than our aa batteries and that has been developed already which can fly at 18 km per hour as a maximum speed but it can hover it can fly in any direction and that too only with a flapping wing so this is one of the main area where future uh, design trends will uh, go if you are looking for development something something new development you can actually look for uh, for for this particular area uh, second one is on the right side the titan aerospace they had actually developed this particular uh, drone which is uh, solar of 50 which is 50 meter in wing span it is a huge and uh, 15 meter in a length uh, this particular drone was solar powered and can fly uh, uh, infinity until their batteries go off it can fly continuously over the around the globe uh, for at uh, for several applications actually google is using it for uh, uh, internet connectivity in uh, uh, remote places so this particular pro projects also we can actually look forward to uh, because uh, if the uh, students are looking forward for some kind of uh, design uh, this thing new new drone they can see for solar drones because this can solve your endurance and range problem which is generally uh, everybody is facing today uh, the first one is endurance like most of the drones which we are flying they are below one hour of the endurance so this particular drone can fly forever actually so you can definitely look forward for uh, solar powered drones the third one at the center that is intel swarm of drones like they are using thousands of drones to create something and that they can create anything there are several applications so this was one of the demonstrations done by intel and they had uh, got uh, guinness book of world record also for this they they had uh, more than 2000 drones there but afterwards some chinese companies also broke this record recently with 3000 drones so definitely uh, you can look for this particular area where you want to look for design trends and the last one where you have drone which can actually change its shape and size in in between flight means like it can fly with the first configuration also it can fly with the second configuration and this configuration you can keep on changing according to your the uh, your space available uh, where, where your drone is going 
so this uh, particular thing is also very good for uh, thinking or think uh, is like uh, for your future uh, design projects but if you are looking for services or uh, uh, coming in the available industry and uh, you want to become a part of that industry so one of the first thing that is already happening over the globe that is uh, deliveries retail deliveries medicine deliveries or any other deliveries with drones uh, the connecting to that there is uh, the uh, next to that uh, below that there is uh, drone taxis this transportation uh, this particular drone can carry actually a man or you can say the more than 100 kg of weight so this is also one of the great area which is happening across the globe uh, where you can place yourself uh, because this can be used for uh, even pa patients carrying or maybe the bodies carrying from the uh, uh, rescue and surveillance so th that you can use such uh, big drones coming below that uh, there is search and rescue operations this is uh, being happen everywhere uh, across globe in uh, forest it is happening in the on the boundaries everywhere so th this also you can actually uh, look for your uh, interest if you are uh, interested really to go in the forest and find something or search something uh, coming on the top right side agriculture drones both spraying drones and analysis drones as i showed you before there is a multispectral or hyperspectral cameras which can actually analyze the current scenario on the field and they can tell you which kind of disease is coming in the next month or what is the deficiency in the uh, agriculture or the farm with the crop so that area is coming up very very fast and you can actually place yourself there the last one that is inspections this is never dying area where uh, you can actually inspect inside indoor or outside there are several asset across uh, uh, industry uh you uh, i didn't mention before that is oil and gas or chemical industry where generally going with a person in a person is uh, very difficult or not safe so that these areas are uh, very strong where you can actually place yourself <coughs> as a career, career opportunities uh, in a industry uh, as as i told you before all streams of engineering has a great opportunity in industry here uh, you can see for drone designing development manufacturing their applications as a flyer or a pilot test pilot uav pilot data management because huge amount of data collected every day with the drones and that has geo tags so that management itself is a very big headache today another thing is like your image processing and data interpretation and so on there are several areas where you can place yourself and uh, you can see what is your interest and accordingly you can uh, approach uh, the industry uh to just tell what is available at our place in a lightning drones we are actually looking for for a junior electrical engineer post and uh, we are actually looking forward for a diploma or graduate the scope of work it uh, he or she is supposed to go on the uh, site and then inspect this ehv overhead transmission lines uh, solar power uh, plants wind turbines and substations with uh, drone thermography iv core testing candidate need to travel across uh, india or maybe abroad and inspect the electrical asset for various test so that's it from my side i hope uh, everybody enjoyed this uh, if you have any doubt you can actually start asking us you can uh, i hope you can chat or uh, maybe you can ask live i i'm not sure but i'll just stop this presentation uh, i hope shridhar sir uh, is that okay i'll stop this yeah thank you very much uh, ramjan patan sir very very interesting we have plenty of questions um, okay Hello, Murthy sir. Should I start the questions, or uh, you have some uh, notes? No, I think you please start the questions because let us uh, answer their students as well as participants are very keen. Please yes, start sir. with the questions. Uh, very, very inspiring webinar, and it has certainly raised volley of questions. I can see twenty-nine questions in the question box. Dr. Shridhar, can you take it forward for the questions? Thank you very much, sir. Front of us. Uh, Ramjan, the first question: How do you handle jumping voltage near the power transmission towers? one of the anonymous uh, attendee has asked this question yeah this is a really good question actually and we had tested several things i went to china also for, to find out how they are doing it uh, chinese people uh, where we went and they were uh, specially they were working with the grid chinese grid uh, which was ehv again more than 400 kv line uh, so they had a very special lab to find mm -hmm. out uh, how your magnetic interference and uh, voltages are affecting on drones but that could a uh, kind of lab we couldn't set up here eight so what we have done is like uh, with the uh, uh, with the permission of uh, the asset uh, manager uh, we have done some testing but 
most of the time we don't go very close to the line we will be like 15 meter to 10 meter uh, in that uh, range 10 meter away from the line so that, that is most of the lines like 400 kv even 765 uh, kv uh, we don't required uh, to worry about that because interference uh, level is not that high at that time thank you there is another question from anjan uh, how to make hydrogen based charging drone do you have any idea on that uh no I, as of now i can't uh, answer this but definitely people are working on hydrogen based uh, fuel cell uh, there is company horizon energy from singapore they are working on this so definitely he can look for on in uh, google edge yeah uh, in line with your uh, progress which you showed about uh, you know inspection of power lines and also the wind turbine there is very good question ajay singh is asking can you identify water seepage in hydrogen power plants dams near the dam there will be water seepage can you identify this yeah we can identify this actually uh, we had uh, we are uh, talking with one of the client uh, regarding this uh, we can even create a 3d model out of this entire dam and then we can zoom it and then see uh, each and every crack or each and every water seepage in the dam definitely this is a, one of the applications where we can use drones yes there are many questions about battery backup and the flight duration can you just throw some lights on it and ah uh, yes uh, as i told you before when uh, we are talking about future trends in design uh the main limitation today with the drone is the battery and the battery which is generally coming from like uh, varying from 15 minutes 1 5 minutes to like 50 minutes 5 0 minutes in that only we can we have to play with uh, with the several combinations so but going beyond uh, it is not possible today so uh, generally uh, on an average the drones which are being uh, flown in the industry today they are somewhere 20 to 30 minutes of uh, endurance okay and uh, same question uh, mr manoj pande is a very good uh, faculty member with us and uh, he has developed uh, many drones with ourselves he has a question have you developed a hybrid drone with petrol electric or something like this any combination of that uh, uh, no no the, the question i, I the didn't the question is have you developed a hybrid drone which will use dual fuel something like uh, petrol plus electric means battery etc and so on uh, Yes, yes, yes. In in house, uh, it is under uh, development. Actually, we are even developing a transition plane which has a multi rotor and fixed wing, uh, in which fixed wing will fly on the petrol engine and uh, multi rotor will fly on the electrical. So that that is in progress. But only thing is like uh, we didn't get much uh, uh, this thing. What I can say the application wise and the economy wise, we couldn't make it take it in the market yet. But yeah, this is in the development. We can do it. There's no problem. Okay, what softwares are you used in your drone? His question asked by Sandeep Mathur. Ah, uh, there are several softwares actually. According to your applications, we are using uh, several applications, uh, several uh, softwares, and even uh, mobile applications. Like uh, talking about few, like uh, if we are using, let's say, DJI drone, we require to fly drone with a DJI software. Ah, uh, they have several uh, their own applications. Apart from that, if we are doing some kind of mapping work, we are using Pix4D. Uh, for flying or drone deploy for flying apart from that we have uh, gs pro uh, these are the applications for flying drone apart from that we have several softwares for uh, analyzing it or post processing it or stitching it there are several softwares which we are using it on daily basis uh, ramjan my question to add it to that how many of them are open source softwares codes uh yeah most of the them are uh, easily available they are open source today industry is growing so fast so software companies are uh, growing very very fast in this uh, area uh, compared to hardware so uh, on daily basis actually new uh, softwares are coming and they are really useful but somebody has to test it and then uh, use it for application so that take times yeah ramranjan patachi is asking how to avoid obstacle especially near trees uh, i mean basically the question is about uh, obstacle avoidance yes uh, when we started in 2011 and all this was very uh, much prominent question very important question but over the period of time uh, ka, these ka companies are using visual sensors previously we were using sonar for this but now uh, they are using small visual sensors in all sides of uh, drone and that, that is uh, giving inputs to the drone that there is a some kind of uh, obstacle in front but yeah as uh, if it is very very small uh, like in uh, centimeter or mm that that not be visible but if something big like a wall or maybe even wind turbine and all definitely it will be uh, showing you that there is a some obstacle and it will calculate how much distance is uh, ranjan actually your uh, talk has created lot of interest so many questions are coming there is a student called pratejas tomar 
He is asking a question: What care ought to be taken in agricultural spraying, and is there any certification to be taken for agricultural spraying? Do you have any information? Yes, uh, for uh, agriculture spraying, uh, it is a really good area, and I am uh, asking people to come in this area because we have very big uh, farmland in India. So, uh, regarding uh, uh, okay, regarding care, which he asked first, uh, definitely, actually, we don't want to get involve our staff member to uh, go and spray drone uh, with the normal spray. That is the reason we are de uh, deploying our drones. So, drone will be away, and the person who is actually flying or uh, assistant people, they will be away from the drone. so definitely you have to see uh, th that distance maintained between you and the machine and the second thing as a certification uh, now dgca has actually opened up and then uh, created uh, several ftos they are assigning the certification for flying drones so definitely they will uh, get the contacts from our site or maybe in the google also yeah there is another interesting question by ramranjan bhattacharji our faculty can we have 3d printable drone Yes, yes, we have. We, we can, we can. Actually, I mean, like uh, today also, we are uh, uh, taking uh, several small uh, components which are not available in market, which the, that we 3D uh, we uh, uh, printed 3D. But you can actually create entire drone with uh, 3D printed. But yes, definitely electrons you can't, so you have to put electrons over. That is true. And uh, Ishan Rastogi is asking, can we use Arduino Nano Wi-Fi for drone? Yes, yes, yes. Arduino are the uh, one of the first uh, boards which we had used in 2011-12 uh, for the making drones. So definitely, Arduino is uh, one of the first choice actually. No, you no, can go ahead and start working. The, the question is on Wi-Fi actually. Arduino Nano Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi, I uh, suggest don't use Wi-Fi because that will interfere your uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, connection which you are using with uh, a remote. and uh, so don't work with wifi directly but yeah if you are working only wifi for uh, uh, connecting drone and then flying it controlling it that is absolutely okay you can fly drone with wifi there is no problem yeah our faculty members are excited dr k m soni is asking uh, we are right now looking at i mean uh, watch this particular webinar we are very much interested how do we uh, we are offering mtech and phd in uh, uh, ae that is aerospace engineering and avionics how to get connected to you i think this answer will be given by our Uh, yes, president yes. astf sir uh, later i have a few more questions here which is very interesting dhruv dr dhruv kumar is associate professor of aup noida i want to read his complete statement i am really excited to read this mr ramjan patan thank you very much for giving very informative and application based information on drones in civil applications we are highly enjoyed and highly appreciative of your lecture even my son studying in the middle school has thoroughly enjoyed your lecture my question is related to health sciences Can we use this drone system to map areas which are prone to tropical diseases, uh, specifically mosquito-borne diseases, including malaria, dengue, Japanese, uh, etc., and all that? So, can you just answer this question, please? Uh, yeah, surely you can do this actually mapping because today drones are being used extensively in GIS. Uh, only thing is like you required somebody to give that input to drone because as you are talking about malaria. uh that drone uh, should have some kind of sensor which can uh, find out the mosquito density uh, but i am not sure about the sensor today but definitely we can uh, come up together and then uh, look for for this application okay there is another question here uh, how many companies uh, may be there in india uh, who is working like this and who who may be manufacturing uh, or giving the components of drone this is from neeraj sharma uh i i can't uh, put the proper number but definitely we have more than 20 companies uh, in uh, india today they are working in the drone uh, at several uh, applications like somebody may be uh, working in the mapping or somebody may be working in inspection uh, regarding manufacturing definitely we uh, do have uh, four, four to five manufacturers in india they are uh, uh, developing indigenous drones and then even supplying to the defense uh, uh, i i hope i answer the question yeah Mr. Patan, Mr. Patan, this is a very highly inspiring actually presentation, and hundreds of questions are coming. One of the questions which is coming to my mind is that drones are highly sensitive vehicles of tomorrow. So, what, how you think the regulations can really cope up with the kind of uh, uh, surveillance and kind of uh, safety hazards which we may have actually with with drones? Uh, can you throw some light on future regulations which will be coming in this area? Correct, correct, correct. Uh, definitely, this area is work uh, growing exponentially, exponentially, and then uh, we have to cope up with the new regulations and rules in uh, from the civil aviation. 
and that definitely actually dgci is working day night on this topic and uh, on the regular basis they are bringing up some kind of draft and some kind of regulations and today uh, uh, already ftos are offering uh, proper certification for flying drones so definitely they are also doing their work and uh, we have to actually cope up with them it should not be like we are fighting with them saying that this uh, rule is not there but uh, we we should uh, i have together we should uh, work it together and then uh, because they are uh, ready to accept their uh, any suggestion on their even twitter account so definitely they are also open up to do this i hope uh, one of our uh, professor here uh, was involved in uh, uh, maybe ms prasad was involved in yes. uh, drone regulations yes professor sir. ms prasad can respond to this. the yes. national policy which are getting framed he is uh, he is involved in that uh, over to you prasad can you just come on all right sir. thank you sir uh sir we have a process we have laid down the certain standards for the drone uh, to be used for uh, uh, at particular altitude that was a very important thing because sir the helicopters fly at around 500 meters to 200 meters so we have divided the given the categories of drones which can be used by these industry people at different altitude then we have also laid down that how to register their drone like an aircraft get registered they get a aircraft number you must have seen sir on each aircraft at the tail there is a number similarly he must have registered couple of his dji phantom uh, what i see or his own octocopter we are coming out with a method for giving them the air worthiness certificate and we are going to uh, i mean a team of us are uh, going to lay down that which institute or which research institute or an industry is going to issue the air worthiness certificate so like in india you have the aircraft uh, inspection group which gives the certificate for air worthiness similar concept we are going for the uav uh, whatever uav we are doing another problem with dgca our own india is doing is that we are going to define geo fencing because sir if you notice uh, especially in the gurgaon area a lot of drones keep flying for the marriage near the airport so we are going to define the geo fencing and then the dgca is also coming out with a major to monitor the flight of a drone so that it does not go into no flying zone or geo fencing area these are couple of things in the plate and most of the drafts um, uh, mr ramjan must have gone through couple of them are coming again on this issue sir i hope uh, yeah, thank, has, you. Uh, thank you yes, sir. thank you sir uh, there is another interesting question here gini arora is asking what are the specific parameters that needs improvement or need while development of drone means which are the research areas which are still pending uh, i can, I, I I can the... ramjan i take a minute yeah please please uh, one of the most important area i see the amount of work uh, mr ramjan has team has done is enormous but most important is we have to develop our own indigenous you know flight controller today you are using the chinese flight controller or do pilot using the gps i can tell you most of the gps data is initialized to singapore or taiwan so this is one of the important factor which i will like to tell all the student work on that it's a software then another idea is fault tolerant on this simply like a couple of his drone must be having a software that is something happens it will return to home <clears throat> that is not a total facility because you are going to fly it in a populated area and if some fault occurs there are people walking on the road or standing on the roofs that is one of the problem which needs to be thought besides number of small things like swarm of drones is an important aspect of working thank you sir thank you sir plenty are there i i just request uh, professor pb sharma sir what shall we do with the questions or shall we take up the questions at the end uh, with the speaker after the session
Maybe time is running out, but if there is any further important question, you can thresh it out in a few seconds, yes. Short answers. I'm, I'm very happy that uh, Mr. Pathan is providing very quick and short answers to the question, which is very, very good, in fact. Dr. P.B. Sharma. Sir. P.B. Sharma. Sir. For this lecture, time will never come, come out. We I should understand. give everybody, every question, the chance to reply. If uh, Professor Pathan can have time to stay for a little more, and anybody who has some other appointment can go, but I want to listen every question which has been put, even if it is two hours late. Right. Because these questions give me a lot of new vision. So, Mr. Pathan, can we continue with the questions? Because yes, sir, I, surely, sir. Surely I, we can continue. There is no problem at all. We can answer. Yeah, I leave it because uh, I don't want to. But for this webinar, there is no time limit. Very good. With the permission of Honorable Founder President, please continue with this very important and interesting webinar for us to understand not only today, but the future, in fact, of drones uh, deployment and design. So, Dr. Sridhara, any further question you have? in the Yeah, there is a very interesting question from Subhanshu Tiwari, our uh, faculty member who is working in uh, atmospheric science studies. Yes. He's asking a very interesting question. Sir, I'm working in the field of atmospheric sciences. I want to ask, suppose we have atmospheric parameter sensors as payload and launch the drones at altitudes, mountains, sites, etc. What are the complexities or complex uh, co complexities we have and uh, how to avoid that? Okay, I, I would like to answer this. Uh, uh, as I showed you one of the case study from the Terry that was the Energy Research Institute. We were working for uh, uh, finding the temperatures above certain points. They wanted to actually measure the temperature, how temperature is changing from the ground to certain heights in the atmosphere. So we went up till like 30 meters or so. So they, we had collected the data with a temperature uh, measurement uh, unit uh, at uh, several heights like uh, 2 meter, 5 meter, and 10 meter and all. So th that has been done, but there was one of the complications which uh, was coming is like, uh, we were uh, not sure that the first conversion which is happening because of the propellers of the drone, and, uh, which is directly hitting on the uh, sensor. So because of that, we had done several uh, different uh, trials where we had placed one of the ladder and then uh, on the top of that, we had the same similar identical sensor. And then we were taking the inputs from the drone uh, sensor also. So like that, we can do uh, the, this kind of work uh, jointly and uh, definitely find out the way out of this. So uh, we, we can definitely attach such sensor and then uh, find out the data. There's no problem. Uh, just added to that from my end, uh, Ramjan, basically whenever you want to take the air samples, uh, the air samples are to be taken at a particular standard rate and standard pressure differences and all. You have your drone blades which are, you know, brushing down the complete uh, wind at a high velocity. And how do we actually control that basically? See, for example, I need to know the data variation in uh, particulate matter from ground level to the altitude. Uh, for example, in Delhi, Burga, we are seeing that, you know, strata variation. How do we do that? Is it possible to collect such things using drone? It is possible, sir. If it is not, see, uh, drone is not only limited to your multi-rotor. You can actually use anything which is unmanned, right? So even uh, many of the places we can use balloons, hydrogen balloons, which we can send it up and then we can collect the data at uh, uh, whatever the uh, time, uh, time span we want. So we can we can actually create or develop some other drones also, which can be useful for such application. Only thing is like we supposed to start with the requirement or the problem statement. We should know what is the payload supposed to take it at what height or at up till what time span we supposed to collect the data. So definitely we can work on this this yeah. problem. Uh, Ranu Nayak is asking what care we should take for the safety uh, when you are using this drone in college and school premises. Uh, the first thing uh, is like you should not test uh, above any uh, human being or like above any people gathering. You should be flying drone or like any kind of flying vehicles away from the people. You're supposed to fly in, on the open ground. That is the first thing which you have to do it. Uh, as we are talking here about the projects which are under development. So definitely we have to take care of this thing first. And the second thing before putting the propeller, we require to test all the parameters with static drone. Like we can actually uh, find out the several things in simulation only, simulation itself. So we don't require to put a propeller and then start flying on the first day itself. So as I told you before also, like before 
started flying we required to do all this ground test and then only take it outside and definitely when we will uh, do so one of the projects together uh, we uh, our team, team will uh, suggest you how to do it and not to do it we'll do it sir thank dr you. lucky krishna is a professor in our department in nanotechnology madam is asking actually uh, suppose you want to use it for emergency area what what is the you know the load they can carry and how do you handle and sustain i just add up a little bit to that Uh, recently in bangalore there were organ donor in one uh, hospital this has to be transported to another hospital which was about 10 kilometers away it took nearly about 3 hours for that and even if you make zero traffic also it took half an hour now the people are talking of using drone to transport the organs from one hospital to another hospital can you just answer this question uh, actually uh, to tell you uh, the previous story there was a green corridor created in bangalore like some 5 years ago or something uh, the first uh, first time it was happened in uh, bangalore and then chennai Ch in bangalore there was a donor and uh, the person who required the patient was there in chennai so what they did is like they created one green corridor from bangalore uh, hospital to the airport and they had uh, took that ambulance in 30 minutes to the airport and from the airport they had uh, flown the aircraft and the, similarly they had taken this uh, might be it was uh, organ was hard and then uh, they had done this successful surgery so the same time ndr that is national design research forum which is situated in bangalore came up with this idea saying that rather doing this all uh, thing in bangalore because stopping uh, this thing signals or like stopping the traffic in the bangalore is very very difficult at that peak hour so ndrf came up with the idea first time and then what we thought is like we can create a drone which can carry this to at least airport not to the chennai but at least to the airport and definitely there is uh, work going on in the country on this and uh, already in country uh, we have developed 100 plus uh, kg's payload uh, drone only thing is like carrying uh, live organ is the question but we can use this particular uh, opportunity or particular drone to several other applications and that is being uh, already it is happening so it is not new yeah, can there are other question uh, can i add something in this Please, sir. Please, please, please go ahead, please. sir. Uh, in the northeastern region, uh, it is being to supply the medicine and emergency devices across the mountains. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the lieutenant colonel trained in our institute, Amit Noida, is uh, actively using it for the army to transport a couple of important uh, items across the valley. It can be done, and like he has got a drone of 10 kg or 6 kg. Uh, that can comfortably lift in the mountain area about 4 to 5 kg due to the air density problem uh, one more uh, to uh, adding to this actually there is one company named uh, zipline uh, they are working very extensively in african countries uh, they have set up their stations from where uh, up to 80 km of radius they are actually supplying uh, blood samples blood uh, bags with a drone that is being happen already and maybe very soon they are actually uh, uh, developing their centers in maharashtra in yeah, one charity is required to based on this question i mean this answer which you gave and prasad sir also gave what what is actually the distance at through which actually you can operate drone or is it to be only autonomous or not uh, yeah after a certain uh, distance uh, you can't fly manual because there uh, there is no use of we are flying manually looking at the screen so generally this kind of missions will be autonomous You what is that number have, people uh, are asking about the number what is the kilometer kilometer, altitude? kilometer okay a kilometer see if it is autonomous then it is any kilometer it can go until its fuel is getting over so as i told you just now the zip line is delivering uh, blood up to up to 80 kilometers 80 80 kilometers from their station so th that is being happen and then as uh, as i told you before there is a titan aerospace they had created their autonomous drone which is flying Uh, across globe uh, all the time it is just revolving around the globe uh, forever it is kind of satellite small yes. satellite can i add something here sir no sir yeah, please, please please go ahead sir uh, yesterday i uh, visited one of the facility and the office research workshop of uh, one of our student who just passed out two years and is running a very successful startup and Uh, a very big mother he is one of the major supplier to the defense forces and paramilitary forces he yesterday showed me his drone which can carry 100 kgs of uh, the weight in 
the plain area and 20 kg which he had successfully demonstrated to army in high altitude area and he is he has also got the drones which is taking navigation from the satellites so the range is limitation of this thing is also not in the visual range so in mountainous range he is able to provide a, not in non visual range he is able to fly his drones through the satellite commands so his startup is now uh, gamma rotors and he has got also given some proposal which i have sent it to the founder president yesterday i spent the whole day in his uh, facilities fantastic uh, sir i think this answer satisfied most of the questions which were asked regarding non visible range of drone and what altitude it can go etc whether it has to be autonomous uh, thank you very much uh, colonel sir uh, dr ashutosh shrivasava is asking a very good question uh, can we have underwater drone yes surely uh, as i told you before this is uh, today's topic was about uh, aerial vehicles so definitely we can have ground vehicles autonomous or even on the surface vehicle like ships or even submarines or underwater vehicles so this all can be autonomous and they can communicate it, uh, communicate to each other and then uh, work together as a network that is definitely it is possible and uh, there is uh, one of the committee in india they are working on this unmanned systems so they are, they are working on the such kind of systems already you know underwater underwater drone okay. i will yeah, add I to it uh, uh, i will add it to it we are working on this the only problem comes in underwater unmanned vehicle is the communication system and uh, their navigation because generally you have to set up a long baseline and that's one of the problem which navy is also finding and we are also finding but in uh, abroad us they use the drones for these purposes and they set up the communication that the communication is the one of the problem otherwise the dc motor and other electronics are more or less same except you have to maintain the positive buoyancy that is another aspect you may not call it uh, underwater drone you may call it underwater autonomous vehicle uh, yes uh, like yes because there the quadcopter would not be applicable you would require in fact a propulsion system that can navigate Dr. underwater Dr. Sir, and of course communication technology is there sir doctor you are the doyen of drones you know because i came to know about drones first time from you i saw the drone first time in your in practice at auh yeah. uh, who can tell me since when since when the drones are known is 5 year 10 year 20 years this drone is something miraculous since when uh, maybe you can reply or somebody else sir uh, since how many years drones uh, are known uh, basically i think uh, drone were introduced to common people through the movie the three idiots Three idiots. <laughs> Three idiots, and everybody no, loves that movie. No, uh, sir, I will tell you, Doctor Sujath. Uh, sir, uh, the con I, I, concept of the drone came in the Second World War, and the name drone came later. Sir, earlier it was a remotely piloted aircraft. Right. So then, Second World War, people started using it a small model aircraft, which can be remotely piloted. Sir, in our yeah. old days, whatever you have yeah. seen the photograph of a car going into a, a valley and all was taken yeah. with that type of model aircraft. Right. right. In 1975, what happened, sir? <laughs> that couple of people in the Texas came out with a, a small yeah. uh, structure in a cross manner yeah. with two motors yeah. attached and a propeller. Yeah. and that used to make lot of noise like all the drones <laughs> made that is the time they coined the word drone because drone is an arizonian bird in amazon yes. which makes a lot of sound sir yes. so that's how the name the pathan, i like uh, pathan, i liked your idea to make a study globally what is all happening all over the world about drones so this is a wonderful idea and Uh, you must be doing we can fully support you uh, in this study because that is a base for your action and our action second thing mr pathan did you contact the ministries that drones can distribute corona vaccine vaccines can the drones be applied for the distribution of corona vaccines so government is quite worried at the moment 
how to do the distribution uh, no i i didn't uh, try for this particular application uh, but yeah we, uh, if at all we have some uh, such kind of opportunity we will definitely look for for that definitely dr shivamurthy yes yeah dr shivamurthy yes. let's talk to in the ministry harshvardhan ji and everybody who was involved icmr right, right. i think uh, this is a great idea because yeah, is, they are all worried now the vaccine will come soon indian or from uh, otherwise other countries otherwise. the usa or russia right uh, but now the distribution that is why modi is also giving a lot of thought right so within few days you make a concept and send to uh, psa nsa right. uh, and all these persons and also harshvardhan ji so this is a uh, maybe they have the idea but we can do it better we know right. more about drones Right. So please make a concept. So, so you, sir, of... you, may, you may remember that ICMR sent, sent a team to Aviti to yes. see our drone ICMR <laughs> sent a team to us just uh, last year to see our students, right. which he was mentioning Kapoor, and we actually demonstrated right. with a payload. It will be with an ice box right. with the in which vaccine will be put there. and our right. our students actually demonstrated how it can be then they that report also i have sent to you that what amiti demonstrated to icmr on this drone developed by our students i will send you the report again and we will write a mail to psa and also uh, the pmo also that this is possible to give it to remote areas like ladakh and also northeast right. where the accessibility will be very less we will be able to uh, send this vaccine in the ice box delivered over there dr shilamurthy uh, in the exhibition of army right uh, the student of rk kapoor presented yes. a drone yes uh, yes you remember that and the among army chief among also very saw that army chief saw that also the general rawat and ministers they came and they stood a long time there yes and that was liked uh, so much that drone rk kapoor where <laughs> is that student That's right, the student right. he was mentioning just now. He was mentioning. Right, right, right. He has right, become right. a big entrepreneur now. Our student has become a big entrepreneur. What about you, Kapoor? Otherwise, otherwise he'll make him entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. He will make him that, entrepreneur. Uh, that student has. Yesterday, I spent the whole day in his office, saw his uh, research lab, and he is supplying in very great number. the victor and kilo force in uh, shrinagar are using his drones excessively he has in, in fact mounted ak47 on his drone he has mounted his uh, dispensers which can throw grenades and ugl the uh, grenade launcher he has mounted on this thing and he demo that drone which you saw in the exhibition of the military that time it could carry only 20 kg now he yesterday showed me a drone which can carry 100 kg in planes and 20 kg in high altitude in ladakh which he has successfully right. demonstrated to army in fact he was telling me that if you want he can lay out his all different products to visual for you to visually see that anywhere either in amity or even in the akc house because at the moment he will dr vivek sharma dr vivek sharma sir i think whatever from today onwards we do in the area of drone research and development production implementation we will do first all with professor patan he will be our first partner yes. and so that he knows everything what we want and we know that what we want and i will fully support in every respect to grow and develop this institution because he is brilliant has a lot of experience and can do a lot and with us together it can be miraculous yes it can be uh, professor shridhar thank you sir so please see that he is he is brilliant and now these many ideas i was talking to nutan koshik when the locus comes locus comes when we know the locus is coming then we fly a drone and they blast crackers they will fly further so i have got two dozen i such ideas where drones but uh, uh, sm prasad mr prasad should rule the regulations it's very important as from to know the yes. rules and regulation yes. and keep in touch with the government to make the rules and regulation because this is immensely important area absolutely immensely important areas even the government told you to work on the bio defense 
also there it can be of great use so i yeah. think uh, uh, dr pv sharma now you take the command we will contact and i i compliment sri dhar and dr patan but this is not the end wo kya kehte hain hindi mein abhi to party shuru hui hai abhi to party shuru hui hai sir your thoughts thank are you sir thank you very much well. and we draw tremendous inspiration from your thoughts even your thoughts of, of distributing a corona vaccine using a, using a drone is really worthwhile pursuing because the biggest problem with vaccine is that you have to put it at ultra frozen temperature and it's such right. like facilities are not everywhere therefore if one can transmit it or transport it from one place to another using a device like drone in a short period of time i think that will solve the problem of ultra frozen condition required for right. vaccine also so i think mr pathan as the honorable founder president has said we would like to certainly in, uh, work with you in partnership with you and pick up your thoughts also and, and also our brilliant minds of student community and teachers we have will work together to really design and develop some uh, high high impact applications which are of direct value mm -hmm. to the community as well as in fact path breaking uh, innovations in that respect so that's that's an area we would have and the honorable founder president has already said uh, he had very high opinion about you and we have very high opinion about you and so thank you to you for giving you this opportunity to be with us and share your valuable idea i was really mesmerized when you said that drones are monitoring the health of the high tension lines i know that lot of leakage of corona is there uh, corona discharge because of high tension high, uh, high current and high voltage involved but you have gone <laughs> close and could even see that there is a, a small pin which is missing from the joint i mean if that can be possible i'm sure that dare drill capabilities of drone Uh, are not far up and we should be okay, able to sir sir prasad sharma just one or two quick things number one if you can contemplate uh, the thought of maybe introducing a minor degree track in drone technology for our engineering students if yes, we sir. can develop a, a separate drone lab which already we have been speaking about and uh, mr ramzan can maybe help in that he already has offered to provide some support that can we develop a high end drone technology lab Yes, also sir. globally there are drone olympics so where youngsters from all over the country come and they fly drones and a track is set up yes. maybe at abt university haryana we can host the first drone olympics of the country okay. where people can fly the drones and show their skills because yes. drone pilots will also be required in the future right. maybe these three things you can please follow up you are absolutely right i think the drone olympic as well as the higher end research lab yes. or drone design and development is very much required we can take a lead in that respect only difficulty is that we are very close to national security guards uh, in our amity university haryana they keep a close eye on whatever we do and uh, even if you send a small uh, balloon in the air it is taken <laughs> note of their own drones are in fact hovering over our campus i can see that happening actually so there will be a whole lot of surveillance but we will certainly take strides in this respect and make our campus much far more vibrant in this area which is so important both for yes, civil and uh, uh, for military let me supplement let me supplement what yeah. chancellor mentioned i had a discussion with uh, mr ramdan just uh, uh, we arrived at five areas for collaboration five areas the first area is the r and d partner he wants amity as the r and d partner because he has got only 11 people with him so he would like to have our phd scholars mtech students and to participate on the project more uh, partnership more this is one area where uh, ramdan is very keen that we would like to work on a partnership more for further development of new types of uavs this is one the second is capacity building capacity building a large number of our students may be interested in taking this as a certification program so we wanted to launch a certification program maybe for one month two months depending on the course content hand song yes. so we will have to develop that hand song so with the permission of the all those people which are required to permit even our neighbors there we will take the permission so the other second part will be capacity building in drone the third one is the drone pilot which c6 also mentioned certification because there are one or two institution have just started pilots because you need to have qualified people who can negotiate the computer human interface dexterity of the hands and also the software 
And if it is going to be an autonomous mode, then you to use that. So we, we have to develop drone pilot certification program in Amity. This is the third uh, area of collaboration. Fourth one is drone club, drone students club. Even, uh, even high school students may like to have a club in which they can come and play hobbies. And now even in the toy shop, the drones are available. They're simple uh, flying, how within the house you can fly that type of toy. So we have to have drone club for students, including the school students. The fourth one is lab expansion, which C6 has already mentioned. The sixth one, we discussed that services, we will be able to give support because you need more people in that services. So we can also in the services which is being provided again on partnership mode that we will be able to employ our, uh, the students and others. So these are the six areas in which we like to build partnership with uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Salamurti, may I request to add one more in this, right. which is that, you know, uh, if we can look at also the regulation and the policy yes. and, uh, Amity law, and we have Amity Law Schools, so yes. maybe our Amity Law Schools can review what are the current laws around where it's permitted, who gives the permission, what are the laws around drones. Yes. And if for India, we can come up with a policy framework that Very we can important. submit to the government also from Amity's side. Very important. Very important. We are asset and our ALS law school, together they can work on this project. Very good, sir. This also will include that. So I think, sir, Professor, sir, these are seven areas in which now we will take forward with your blessings if you approve this that we will go ahead and start discussing and build and keep you informed on the progress on this mission, mission draw. Dr. Shivamurthy, on 3rd December, yes, sir. German Research Day is being celebrated in a very big way. Right. We should see there, speak to people uh, what Germany is doing in the area of drones. Right. Because a large number of research institutions are coming there. So that will be a one uh, place platform to give, give us an immediate idea Wonderful because idea. our German chapter of STIF. Yes. Uh, now, uh, as Professor Pathan told, I am very eager now to do the global development. What is happening where? Right. So that there we start and we become among the top, among the top. Indian brain, I always tell, uh, you can't find a second Pathan easily elsewhere. So we have to, we have to work on it. Sridhar? Sir, thank you, sir. If I spend so much time, I have some expectations from you people. Sure, sir, definitely. I'm very short of time. But today, yes, I, I overruled P.V. Sharmaji that go ahead. Now I that. give to P.V. Sharmaji. Yes. So long as you are there, sir, we all are here. And we are here very eagerly uh, understanding what can be done and, and should be done within the framework of our own university so that we make a we make committee as a major contributor to this very important area. And I'm sure all the six areas, seven areas identified, they, they, they will be pursued, including the minor area degree program, which our honorable founder, honorable uh, yeah. chancellor has suggested. This will excite the imagination of our own students in various Amity universities. Sharmaji, we'll Sharmaji, Sharmaji, one more, one more to the list. Program. One more I want to add. The internship for our students, aerospace students who want to take, he is ready to take large number of interns. So this I want to tell all of our faculties. Right. And, uh, he has already, workshops and uh, also has interns. agreed to take a large number of internship for students, undergraduate, postgraduate Very students. Good. So please feel free to expand that. This is the eighth, way, the eighth one. Mr. Patan, would you like to say anything at this point before we go further? It's great opportunity and uh, amazing <laughs> response, sir. I am really welcome to see the so many questions here and then so many opportunities coming up. As you know, uh, just I, I am also writing it down like eight areas where we are actually looking forward to work together, partner together. Right. I'm, uh, I really appreciate. I thank to uh, Dr. Sridhar to introduce me here. And he'll thank to them. <laughs> so you are a wonderful person, uh, uh, Ramdan, Patan. And uh, you have tremendous strength. You need people now. You need this amity will provide for your growth as well. You know, this is now you are, we are you are going to be a multi-billion dollar business company. <laughs> founder president's <laughs> blessing. Thank I am telling you. you. Once your blessings of founder president is there, you will become a multi-billionaire. So uh, we, we will work with you in all these area, eight areas. Now every every month we will send a report to founder president and chancellor. This is what we have achieved in these eight areas. 
and these are the people who are working on a quantitative, that is tangible outcome, which we have produced by this collaboration. We will send a report to founder president. Uh, Professor P.B. Sharma and uh, Sridhar have a very major responsibility now to take it forward. You people are the prime movers in this particular program. We will facilitate, catalyze, and, and also uh, monitor the progress. But I'm sure you people now, we will send a monthly report to founder on the progress on each one of these eight points. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much indeed. With the permission of the Honorable Founder, President, and Honorable Chancellor, if you permit, I could show two small video clippings right. just to go back to the memory lane to remind us where we really had tremendous excitement in our university in respect of uh, uh, using drone for such an important application as, in fact, dropping the gold medal, actually. <laughs> Great. Sorry, this is being shared. No? This convocation was witnessed by the by Professor C. N. R. Rao, the Bharat Ratna, in fact, and in his presence, the gold medal was awarded by Amity University, delivered by uh, by drone. And I have another small one, which just to show what drones can do in the area of uh, dropping the medicines at the right place, which Honorable Founder President has so well, in fact, uh, said. This is. From our innovation day, in fact, video clipping, in fact, where box of medicine being taken by. Very good. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Great. I think give a big clap for Dr. P. V. Sharma. Dr. P. V. Sharma, I have told you, Doyen of Drones. P. V. Sharma and Pathan, we can do wonders. Sir, sure. We can do wonders and we'll immediately. Find out from government what are the rules regulation. We will contact government that we can help in the vaccine distribution with our drones. Asimji, you know, you, you tell now. Asimji is an absolutely innovative person. Absolutely. Hello. It's something miraculous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, no, I think, Sharma, we can uh, go towards closure of the session. I think everything has been said that had to be said, but I think we must, in closing, appreciate Founder President that whatever he picks up, he gives a momentum and energy and direction that uh, almost what otherwise would seem impossible seems not only possible, but likely. So we are always grateful, not only for Mission Drone, but for all these hundreds of initiatives that Founder is able to motivate, galvanize, and push us in the right direction and ensure success. And I know that all of you who are involved will live up to this expectation that uh, the responsibility that Founder has put upon your shoulders and not only meet, but exceed the expectations. So Murthy, you as always have a good plan. You have been working with founder so closely. You know his every heartbeat and thought and Professor P.V. Sharma, a wonderful Dr. Shida. Uh, let us close the session and get on with the work to achieve great things with Mission Group. Thank you so much. I request our honorable vice chancellor to give the vote of thanks. Just really one. speaking, uh, it's my proud privilege to thank uh, Sharmaji, Honorable President. Just yes, one, one part. Part. Yes. You would like to say a last word. I yeah. thank MS Prasad, RK Kapoor, Manoj Pandey, PB Sharma to have sent me a lot of details on drone. I have to work two, three hours more today night <laughs> until I have read all. They have given so much information and I am so impatient to go through all. And Salamurti, tomorrow your life will be more difficult. I will tell you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's always pleasure. It's always pleasure to have instructions from you. So, P.V. Sharma, you know. So, it was a great privilege and honor to have our Honorable Founder President and our Honorable Chancellor, along with the very many senior scientists of Amity University, 
witnessing this high impact webinar on civil applications of drone, how they are designed, developed and deployed for very, many important sensitive applications, which otherwise could not have been possible without the application of drone. We are truly grateful to each one of you for your kindness in gracing this very important high impact webinar. At the same time, let me also thank Mr. Ramjan Pathan for sparing his highly valuable time to be with us. And as, we, as has been said by the Honorable Founder President as well as our Honorable Chancellor, we would work with you and we want to involve you to the best extent possible so that the promise of making impossible possible could be delivered by using drones. And uh, hundreds of applications could, of course, be rolled out. The R&D, the, the capacity building, as well as, in fact, the creating that excitement in the drone club we would like to involve you everywhere. We thank you very much for your valuable time. I thank you, Dr. Sridhara, for you. identifying Mr. Ramjan Pathan for this very important webinar at a time when we all are struggling through to find ways and means of creating much bigger impact of science and technology for creating a brighter future for the humanity at large, and especially for our people here in India. Civil applications have grown up like anything, and I'm sure so are the military and and defense applications are drawn in the years to come. Maybe the future flying machines would be more autonomous than they are today. And the days of personalized flying are also not very far off. If you can take 100, and 100 kg weight using a drone, you can also take me from my office to you know, the AKC house or for that reason, Amity uh, Noida or Amity Jaipur. Those days would be of course possible. So I'm sure that there will be several other areas which will be opened up by their development of drone and drone technology. I feel very happy that this webinar has been attended by very many students as well as research scholars from various summary universities. As many as 513, I could see the count initially that they were uh, logged in into, into the presentation. So I feel very happy that the necessary excitement, euphoria, and interest in the drone science and technology has been created. Let me finish by saying, that this is integrative science and multidisciplinary engineering, acknowledging no boundaries for applications and no horizons remaining untouched. And that is the beauty of, of the drone and drone technology with these closing remarks. Why I once again thank you very much, Dr. Silva Murthy, Dr. Sassan Sridhara, Honorable Founder President, Honorable Chancellor, Dr. Professor Prasad, Colonel Kapoor, and a whole lot of my senior uh, colleagues who are connected to this very important web. Thank you so much indeed for giving us this privilege and honor to host this uh, webinar uh, today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Once again, grateful to you all the of students you. students and the teachers are also looking at chairperson. Extraordinary told them because the school students are also very innovative. Yes. So chairperson took the interest when she got the circular. She immediately uh, disseminated it to the students and Rajiv Sharma should be careful. They may come with a better idea than our university students. <laughs> Good. Good. I'm sure the excitement for uh, robots also began at a school level, in fact. And today robots have gone to great applications. Likewise, drones, of course, are very popular at the school level. Small, small drones can fly even in our office. I had a small drone flying in my office. I was really scared. They said, don't worry too much. It will do no harm. It will come very close to you and, and take all, all imaging and whatnot. So I think there would be a lot of opportunities for creating this excitement in the Amity International School. And I know our honorable chairperson is very much uh, uh, always connected in, in the science and technology innovations and activities, which can create the future ready scientists from Amity schools. And I think this, is, this will be a great opportunity. Dr. Padmakali, Dr. Padmakali, you start immediately open elective. Yes, sir. Open elective course for drones. Absolutely. I will tell to Braminder Shukla and to my other vice chancellors, Dr. Sure. Sardi, a open elective course right. that uh, everybody can take engineering or MBA. So that will give a lot, a lot of interest and insight. So Padmakali, right. you should be first to start with Absolutely. the permission of Pim Sharmaji. Open right. elective. Sridhar? Yeah. Open sir, yes, sir. for drones. Sure, yeah. sir. Already we have made some framework, sir, at AUH. We will share with others and then we'll get Thank through. You. Open elective followed Thank by you. minor area courses yeah. around around drone science and technology. I think that will be done. Surely Correct. we'll take lead in this respect. Great, great, great. So, so,
Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Admin, you can close the link. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.